Eureka 7 and Basilisk, episode 1. Now, Eureka 7 won by a landslide. It got pretty much, uh, I think, triple the amount of votes as uh, Basilisk, and it was kind of, um, kind of difficult because, because Eureka 7 got so many votes, such a strong majority, all the other shows were very close, kind of almost even. Basilisk had like 10 more votes than the other three shows, um, which were all kind of the same amount. So it was, it was rough for a minute there. I was like, I'm not sure, am, am I gonna have to watch all five shows? But let's start with Eureka 7. So I'm skipping the opening theme song. I always do that because I feel like it gives too many spoilers. So there are these two guys, uh, Stoner and Matthew. And they're in an airplane, and they're taking pictures. It's not an airplane, it's a giant robot suit. Okay. And suddenly missiles. Um, so we have to fight. There are lots of giant robot suits with, like, on, um, on, um, flying skateboards. So there are all these interesting characters in this one guy. They're going to this location, and he's got a picture of his family with his mom's face crossed out. And what's going on? Who are these people? And now we've got this 14-year-old kid, kid, and he's like, I've been alive for 14 years and nothing interesting has ever happened for me. And he has like a, 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 a surfboard, hoverboard thing, I don't know. These, those are cool. It's kind of like what the giant robots were flying. And he's admiring that guy in the robot suit that we saw earlier who had that picture of his family. That guy is Holland, I believe. And so he wants to be just like Holland and have interesting things happen to him. So the city is really run down. And the only way to live a good life is to become a soldier. And he doesn't want to do that. And uh, they keep talking about, like, the waves never come. Like, air waves, I guess? Because they, they use their surfboards in the air? Right? Our main character, Renton, um, the 14-year-old, he is the son of this really famous guy, I guess. But everyone's really skeptical about it, and so Renton's older sister left to go discover the place that he saved the world and she's been missing ever since, so I guess maybe he's on his own. So then he has a flashback of when his sister did leave. And he's got this little like green glowy device to remember her with. And Grandpa comes to the school to talk about um, Renton's future. He doesn't want him to become a soldier. Oh no, the little place that he goes to in order to get his waves like just exploded. <laughs> Everything bad is happening to this kid. So his little green device, the, the word Eureka, comes up every once in a while, and um, he has no idea what it is, or why it says that. So Grandpa wants Renton to become a mechanic, because Renton's not good enough to go to high school, and he's, he doesn't want him to become a soldier, and he thinks that his dreams of becoming a wave guy is, like, crazy. So he takes his um, surfboard, Grandpa takes Renton's surfboard and runs out of the house. And they're immediately faced with an LFO, those are the giant surfing robots. And it crash lands in their backyard. Apparently this type of LFO is like super rare and super powerful and like the best kind you can get. And this cute girl pops out. I just realized that I didn't align the picture at all. There we go. Probably looked like I teleported, right? Renton's just sitting there admiring the robot. He's just like, wow, this is so cool. It's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Oh, so the green thing he's been carrying around is a compact drive, which powers the robot suit. And she doesn't have one of those. So he's like, let me try mine. And he puts it in. That's what she said. So she gets herself a flamethrower and um, makes a fire and he's like, what the hell? Her crash landing destroyed his room and instead of like rescuing any of the stuff, she just sets it on fire. And Renton's like, oh no, this isn't what I wanted. Oh, Holland and his bros are watching. It seems as though it was all part of their plan to have her crash land at this particular residence so that the grandpa would fix the the uh, LFO, because Holland doesn't want to go in and talk to them directly. I wonder if maybe Holland knows um, Renton's dad. Grandpa's not really fooled about what's going on. He's kind of just like, here, take this thing and get out of here, all of you. So he knows that other people are watching. But then suddenly missiles, so she has to fight in the robot suit. I thought it was broken, but I guess I'm wrong. Oh no, Grandpa's hurt! Ah! So there are these guys. Like the, the, um, uh, what do you call them? The army. And in particular, this one kid who's particularly like, No! We shouldn't have fired the shots at a civilian residence! And they're like, Shut up, you! You're not going to be important later! <laughs> so now robots are fighting. 
and uh, Grandpa's looking a little hurt, and he's like, here, take this strange purple device to the girl. If you use it on the LFO, then the robot becomes that, sh that much more badass. Ooh, and so he takes off, and he drives off of a cliff. Uh, and <laughs> hopefully this is gonna work out, or else he's gonna be smashed and die. I, I doubt that, but still. All right, so that's the end of Eureka 7, and I, it was really good. I liked it a lot. I think that they established the characters really well, the universe is really interesting, um, and it's a very memorable feel to it. I feel like I've watched a show with a similar art style once before, and I liked the art style back then, and I like this, I like it now. So, um... Yeah, I, I like that one a lot, and assuming Basilisk isn't better than it, then I look forward to watching it. So let's watch episode one of Basilisk. Oh, ninjas. Oh, ninjas. Oh, I can already tell this. I have to choose between robots and ninjas. Oh, okay. So we had this opening with the snake and the hawk fighting each other, and then I skipped the uh, opening theme song, and now we're at this castle. Uh-oh, they're starting up. Oh, whoa, what's wrong with your chin? Oh! <laughs> So they introduced three characters to us, and I'm just, I was very distracted, as you can see, so I did not see their names. Oh, turns out they're introducing, like, 12 characters right off the bat. Oh no, this is hard! But we are starting with a ninja battle, which I do like very much. Okay, so... That guy's dead. Oh, your chi- ah! <laughs> We have this ninja who's using, like, women's black hair, and he uses it to attack, and it's sharp like wire. But his opponent is actually not- Oh, the chin! Ah! <laughs> his opponent is not actually dead, because he's also uh, awesome. <laughs> ah! <laughs> they just keep showing that guy <laughs> and his chin. <laughs> so he hacks a loogie at the, um, the hair guy. And so now his hands are actually stuck to his face. He can't really do anything. Can't manipulate the, the hair attack anymore. And the hunchback grabs onto him. But, oh, he can manipulate the hair with his legs, too. And he breaks the phlegm and gives himself a fabulous haircut. And all these people are just watching this battle take place. I wonder if it's just for fun, like an exhibition match or something? I don't know. We, there's, like, no backstory. They just started the episode with these two guys fighting and all these other guys watching. So I guess freakish chin man is Ieyasu. Um one of the uh, shoguns of Japan. Is this like historical? I mean, it's not actual, actually history, but like it takes place in ancient Japan. This isn't a separate universe. Okay. I am going to watch this scene again with subtitles because I do not understand what is happening. <laughs> so I guess there are these feuding tribes of ninjas or something, <laughs> or samurai or warriors or something. So they're gonna have like a 10 match tournament in order to decide who wins and they're gonna use ninjas? They suddenly say stop the battle and the two ninjas stop immediately even though they're like this close to killing each other. Oh stop the- oh his chin looks like a ball sack. Ugh. So he makes the proposition like oh let's have them fight to the death that'll be really fun and um the the two old ninjas are, are not they're not ninjas but the two old people who brought the ninjas are like battle to death we've hated each other for so many years this sounds lovely so they are going to select the next shogun um, whoever wins this ten death match tournament so the two elder people look at each other and they're like oh my god this is a weird turn of events for us because you know, we hated each other for so long, but our grandchildren were totally in love. So it seemed like things were going to work out. But now that we have this opportunity, let's just, you know, embrace it. Oh, I get it. Romeo and Juliet with ninjas. Got it. So then we get to look at the Romeo and Juliet of this series. Romeo's got fabulous eyebrows. Oh my god. And uh, Juliet is, I don't, I don't know, she's got bangs for miles. Their names are Danjo and Ogan. I don't, I don't know if they're... Legit in love, or they just want peace? Ah, oh, they're in love. Okay, got it. They're kind of on the verge of hanky-panky, but then there's an explosion in the distance, and it's coming from Ogun's village. Okay, this is really brutal. Um, okay, people are, like, legit dying. <laughs> okay, so Danjo goes into the village and starts killing people. Oh, it's so amazing! He's deflecting bullets with his sword. Ah! 
Oh no, Grandpa, the Elder, he's been slain. So more, more soldiers are coming in, and um, they want to escape. Um, we have to leave all the dead, and we have to just get out of here. Take Ogin and get out. Um, and she doesn't want to, of course, but they're like, no, this is the only way. There's no other way to win. They escape into the forest, but there are still people attacking them, and they kill off all the other guards who are standing by. And it's Danjo's guys who are attacking, and all these ninja are attacking him, and they're like, wait a second, that's, that's Danjo, right? No, hey, what are you doing down there, bro? And Danjo's trying to be like, stop, we don't need to do this anymore, and they're like, we don't care what you say. The, the guy said we can do it, and we wanted to kill them anyway, so yay. And Ogun has been shot, so she's injured, and, but she's like doubting Danjo because... You know, his clan just like murdered most of hers, and so she's like, oh no, this is terrible. So then she charges at him with a sword because she's so angry, and he defends himself, of course. He's not gonna let her kill him just because he loves her or whatever. Oh my god! Oh, the old people were them! That was a flashback! <gasps> oh, these two old people talking to her. Oh! So that wasn't the grandchildren. <gasps> That was so good! <laughs> oh, he just killed her! <laughs> Rude! Oh, or not, or, or, or she's not dead and she stabbed him too, so they died together? Oh, tragedy. Their lives. So after the credits, there's another scene. We've got girl and boy. Maybe these are Romeo and Juliet. Okay, so obviously that, that, um, Revelation was like so awesome. I just, that didn't even occur to me for a second. So that was really cool. Up until then, I was kind of like, yeah, this is good. It's all right. But like, if they're able to throw stuff like that at me, then I wonder like, what other kinds of plot twists they have to offer. It's really hard. I truly enjoyed both shows, and I have to choose just one of them. Huh. <laughs> so uh, by the next video, I will have made my decision. So I guess I'll just see you next time for episodes 2 and 3 of either uh, Basilisk or Eureka 7. Bye!